hello and welcome back to the Flow Station podcast. Today's episode is a very special one for me. Uh, it's with my good friend Jordan Hamilton, my 3x3 teammate. He is a positive psychologist, and lately I've been feeling a lot of joy. Been been curious. Is like wow, I haven't felt this way in a long time, and uh, I knew the guy to, to reach out to. Jordan has been studying play and obviously positive emotions in his PhD program and he was able to offer a ton of insights into the importance of play the importance of expressing joy enjoy the episode one thing that I've been doing with guests and I think it's been a a really dope way to start and then it just effortlessly flows into everything is starting the podcast with doing like a visualization of each other and either a moment that you're super grateful for that we both shared or a moment that brought you a ton of joy that we both shared and kind of given a few minutes to like sink into that. So we're like kind of coherent together and then share that moment and then go into the pod. And then would you feel comfortable doing that? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. So let's just, uh, let's just tap in for a few minutes and maybe you can just let me know when you feel like you, you sealed that into the heart space. Got it. Breathe that in. Yeah, I feel like I pictured mine as well. Yeah, and when you're ready, I feel like it'd be a cool way to start it so people can kind of know our connection and get to know us a little bit more of like what, what came up for you and then I'll, I'll share what came up for me. What came up for me was after our tournament in Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. We- we, we took a trip to, first of all, that was a moment of joy. Um, yeah. A high moment of joy of, of relishing that, that success that we experienced on the court. Uh, but what came up for me specifically was when we went uh, hunting for reishi mushrooms in the waterfall. <laughs> and um, I think specifically the joy that ex- was experienced there was so pure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the natural environment was conducive to that. We felt really free to be childlike and, and expressive in our joy and our wonderment and celebrating one another. Um, that it, it became contagious. I think the joy yeah. you know, snowballed into, into real freedom. Um, So that was uh, something that came up for me and it really felt like an energy, felt an energizing sensation in my chest and, uh, and, and led to sensations of expansion. So thank you for, for opening that door to tap into that. Yeah, man. That's fun. I mean, I'm smiling. I can't stop smiling (laughs) of that experience. Like it's funny, like what came up for me was in something I've always appreciated about you is uh, I, I go back to my APU days when like first thing that popped up was you teaching me Qigong outside of our after open gym and then moving on to when we went to hunt for dirty river water <laughs> with our like glass gallons carrying those probably 50 60 pounds a couple miles and then just dumping it out <laughs> as soon as we get home and like to me I think what brought so much joy in those moments for me was it was so outside of the realm that I felt I was stuck in that like, Mm. Oh, I can live a different way. There's Mm. other ways to live this life. I just need to find more mentors or friends that live in those different ways that resonate more to me and uh, find those levels of intimacy that, that felt so effortless. Like when we were just doing things that were outside of the norm, I remember I was getting shit for the river water deal for a long time. (laughs) Uh, so yeah, man, that, that's what came up for me. And that's going to segue into why I wanted to connect with you in the first place. Not, not only just because I I love talking to you, but joy, man. Um, 
as of late, I've been feeling a ton of enthusiasm, a ton of joy within myself that I'm like, whoa, this is un- this is unknown territory a little bit. I've I haven't been able or known outlets to express joy for a long time. You know, basketball always started to turn into work. All the outlets that I would train had to be really hard. Um, uh, when I started having a lot more anxiety or negative emotions, it was like, that was my only focus was to get rid of those, not to actually learn to express joy when it comes. And so um, I'd be curious, you know, to start it off, any thoughts that are coming to your mind about joy, but how do you express joy in your day-to-day life? Yeah. Um, so joy, I wrote a paper uh, my first year in grad school on this idea of group flow and self-transcendent emotions. So these are emotions when you, you lose a sense of self-consciousness mm. and you become, you, you feel a sense of interconnectedness with things broader than yourself and joy is one of them. So joy is an emotion that ejects us from our own mental perspective of ourselves and I think allows us to have some freedom and it's also a very active emotion. So Mm. it's not as passive um, as some other ones. I think it's, it's interesting to compare like the activation of joy, enthusiasm to anger. You know, both of those are active emotions just on different ends of the spectrum in terms of positive, negative. Um, And similar to anger, I think by holding joy in, it becomes corrosive. It's kind of like holding heat in your body. Mm. It it can overheat you um, and lead to anxiety and a mutual, uh, friend of ours, mentor of ours, Court talks about that a lot. And, um, and he asked me one time, express joy in the next word. And what I did was <laughs> sat there and was like, okay. And then I just yelled, yes. Uh. So it was just, it was just, yes! <laughs> and that's how I got joy out. Wow. And, and yeah. so, uh, it's something that I, I've turned back to sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I notice like patterns in my life when I'm feeling joy, it's usually, you know, uh, sports is one way where I tend to experience joy. So it'll be when I'm feeling really charged and full of joy, it'll be a loud noise, um, something to match the, some expression to match the energy that I'm feeling inside. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, so, it, and it's something, it's interesting. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, where it, joy reminds me a lot of flow in it, the sense mm. of it's something that we all want to experience it. We all pursue it in different ways, yet it's something that happens. Yeah. You can, you can prepare and set up the conditions to experience joy or experience flow, but it's something you sort of stumble into mm. and there's sort of an allowance of it happening. Um, I don't know if that's been your experience as well. Well, yeah, I I would love, I I still want to hear more about some of those experiences for you, but something that's popping in my head is like, as of late, I've been waking up to enthusiasm, like Mm -hmm. almost like a kid on Christmas where, oh my God, there's so many gifts I could open up. Which one do I want to choose? And if you don't know, or I should say, if like what I've recognized is when I don't know how to choose or channel or express just one gift or one avenue to express it it turns into anxiety. It starts to turn Mm -hmm. into overwhelm. And those two emotions, I think, are kind of go hand in hand. And so when you're saying that it kind of happens to you, what my mind goes to is like, I think that's more happiness. Like that's more of like circumstantial, like, oh, you're just being happy because this went right or this went wrong. Whereas joy is that kind of like self-transcendent self, like you stop the self-referencing the story is kind of gone and that expression just comes out naturally. So maybe you can go into happiness versus joy and kind of a little bit of the difference of those two so that there's not a confusion of like just the happiness that comes from, you know, a check hit in the bank account or scoring 20 points in a game. Yeah. So I think the, the, you know, the combination of, of how like enthusiasm and joy are really 
well paired in, in, in terms of comparing these two. Happiness is usually based on outcomes or what's happening around you where I think joy or enthusiasm, it's a more raw emotion. Um, mm. And I think it, it, it's, it's somewhat spontaneous, right? Like what did you do to wake up with enthusiasm? It's just, right. it's there. Okay, right. so now what do you do with it? Um, and I know for me, when I have those moments of enthusiasm or joy, the first impulse is, is usually to share it, mm. um, where it's like it's, it's overwhelming. And, and because I think it is self-transcendent, it's, it's this desire to then um, get it out, distribute it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that could be, you know, calling a friend or, um, you know, maybe it's writing, it's right. It's trying to in some way capture this moment or, or this expression, but usually it, it, it's sharing with others. Mm -hmm. um, and because it is an activated state, it usually manifests in some way that's you know, goofy or uh, free there's a lot of freedom when you're experiencing joy. And there's also this idea of emotional contagion. So when you share that with others, when you share your joy with others, it's, there's that possibility, that potentiality to then introduce them to the experience of joy as well. Yeah. No, there's a, there's the, this is a perfect segue because when you're talking about that, that expression of joy, I feel the same way. It's like, I just want to share it. Like I want to, I want to be able to, capture it and be like wow i'm seeing life in such a beautiful way i would love to have somebody else join me on this yeah you know it's one of those emotions that we become more together and it's why i've seen like man joy is what's going to let me help the world more than feeling dread or being suffocated by all the bad things that are happening and so what's popping up for me is like when that enthusiasm or that joy comes in how do you express it without like giving it away and still like circulate it? Cause I feel like sometimes I will feel that joy and it'll be such a beautiful feeling. And then I'll try and disperse it out to all these people. And then I'll kind of run into a wall where, you know, their pain hits me and then I kind of lose it. Does that kind of make sense? So it's like, I want to mm -hmm. share it, but I also want to kind of protect it in a way. Like I want to express it, but I also don't want to just, give it away to somebody who might need to validate it now or might need to feel joy too, or else I lose it. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. I think it brings up an interesting component here of, of the nature of emotions and this idea of non-attachment, right? Mm. Where, um, you know, emotions I think are like waves in the ocean. Um, you'll have a variety of different waves throughout the day it, carry on for various lengths, vary in size and power in all of that. And, mm. and to acknowledge joy as a, as, as a wave that you're experiencing, you happen to be experiencing in this moment, you know, it, it's something to then observe, to participate in, to enjoy and be present with. And I think it, you know, that component of then knowing who to share it with is, is a consideration as well. Like, okay. Mm. Who's open to receiving this joy? And that's something you can even ask yourself and allow your intuition to introduce people to that may be open to receiving it. Um, but, I, you know, it's a dangerous thing, right? Because joy is such a beautiful experience, yet also it's temporary. Yeah. And it's going to pass. And there's this idea, of, you know, ride the wave. And then when it ends, paddle out for the next yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. You know? No, that's, uh, that's beautifully said. And I think it's something I believe that I apply a lot more, whereas I used to, again, would feel anxiety. And then the only thing I could think of is getting rid of it. So resist, persist, and it just keeps going. And so to me, all those emotions are beautiful. Like to me, um, the other day, I was feeling a lot of anxiety. And I was like, oh, okay, this is just my body, my body telling me I'm in my head too much. Come back to your body, express this in a better way. It's not bad. It's not, it's not 
good. It's just, it's just an emotion and it's telling you something. And so mm-hmm. even with anger, it's like, okay, well, do you have a boundary that's not tight enough? Is there something that what, what's agitating you? Is it righteous anger that you can express? So to me, it's like to get to joy. And I think, I don't know who brought this up to me, but if there's those other limiting emotions, it's harder to express it because it, those can also take place in the heart and like take place in the body. And that was what was so cool when you described the joyful moment with me, you went right to your body. Oh, I felt, you know, a rise in energy in my chest. It's like you intuitively know, okay, go to the body. Don't go to the mind. So can you, can you dive a little bit deeper into that of like expressing all emotions and Mm -hmm. how we do that in healthy ways? Yeah. Well, it's exactly what you said is going to the body. So Mm -hmm. joy, for example, you know, in considering how to express it, one way to do it is to ask yourself in your body, how, how can I express joy in this moment? Mm. Maybe it's a yell. Maybe it's a big, loud yeah. yes. Yeah. Maybe it's like jumping up and dancing, <laughs> you know, maybe it's something yeah. really physical, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe it is calling a friend and, and, and maybe it's a transition of like joy, sharing joy and sharing gratitude. Gratitude is another transcendent emotion. Mm. Um, so it's getting to know yourself better and, opening up that line of communication with your body, kind of like what you did with, with anxiety. It's exploring and asking yourself what you need to move that emotion through um, so that it doesn't linger um, for longer than it, than it should. There's a great quote uh, of this. One of my favorite little books is, is the art of peace. And it's Mm. by uh, Morihei, Yushiba, who was the founder of Aikido and has all these little quotes in it. And there's a story about him and anger. And he was really compassionate and, and present and an excellent teacher. But there were times where he would get angry and it was, mm. his anger was like the crack of a whip. It was sharp. It was loud. And then it was over. Mm. And I think that's real emotional mastery is to be able to allow it to feel it when it comes up to express it and then let it dissipate and be done with it. Yeah. And that requires a work. Yep. We're not necessarily conditioned to, to do that and to interact with our emotions in that way. Yeah. It, I mean, it kind of goes back to, are you reacting to it and you're unconsciously choose, are you unconsciously just releasing it and you could affect the people around you? Or are you consciously aware? Okay. I have choices to use this anger in a righteous way, or I can, I can choose the outlet that I want to express it. And what, what you've been saying uh, several times in this podcast, you're not telling people what to do. You're, you're basically asking questions. And what courts helped me realize is questions are intimacy to the self. Like it is, it is more compassion to ask yourself, Hey, how do you want to channel this emotion right now? Versus why am I feeling anxiety? there's a much different response that your body's going to have of in, in that intuition you're talking about. And so with this, that questioning process, a lot of times I've found if it's not done in a ground place, you're just going to get more mental diarrhea. But when I get myself, give myself space, maybe it's five minutes to breathe and kind of become really keenly aware of the emotions. Now my intuition can kick in. And I usually get that from like a, like a gut. Yes. No. Or mm-hmm. like a, um, just a clear answer that there's no indecision and there's no second guessing. Like today I woke up, it was kind of a mix of anxiety, enthusiasm. And I'm like, okay, Will, you know that that means to you get into your body. You're thinking too much. You're thinking about life. So I, I sat and meditated right behind me. And at the end of the 10 minutes, I asked myself, what do I need today? And what popped up was run or no, no, no. What popped up first was fun. And I was like, okay, I need, I need to have a little more fun. How can I express fun run? And I was like, okay, cool. So I went and did my riding ritual. And then I just ran around the park like three times. And it was just the most joyful, like opening of my chest, enjoyment of the beautiful nature that's around me. And that all was from within. It wasn't somebody telling me what to do. It was like really me trusting my inner knowing it. I doubled down on it. And there's been so many times that that's helped me. Sometimes it'll be, what do I need today? Breathe. 
What does this park need from me? Breathe. It doesn't, we don't need to take on all these things that we think we should do. And so, sorry, on a rambling question, how, talk about that inner knowing and that questioning process that, and how it manifests for you. Yeah. Well, I think it's a, a good perspective to, and lens to view that process of inner knowing, of developing that voice and that intuition through is, is through this perspective of play. And there we go. Yeah. And rather than to perceive it as work or as something that you needs to be a serious pursuit, rather play offers the opportunity to explore, to be curious, to be creative. And this lightens the whole, that whole space and that whole process. So, you know, when you were talking about running, I couldn't help but think of that as being play. You know, yeah. you, if you think back to being a kid, you ask, that's what you did all the time. What do I want to do today? Ah, I want to play with Legos. Okay. I want to play with my friends. I want to make up a game. I want to play basketball, right? You're asking yourself, how do you want to play? And that's so dope. And that's a way to access these deeper intuitive parts of ourselves that over the years may have atrophied in some ways to Re reinvigorate them and to re-engage them. Um, so I think questions is a great way and, and to start with everyday things, right? Like in the morning, you know, you could ask like, what do you want to do to start your day? Um, you can ask, what do you want to eat? Asking your body, what do we want today? Um, and just starting that dialogue between yourself, between your mind and your body to fortify that connection. Yeah. Um, and I, I'd also encourage that I think movement in terms of expressing emotions hmm. is such a useful tool and moving in different ways and different movement patterns. It's a great way to bridge that idea of play and emotions uh, because play is really cathartic as well. It's a great way to release emotions. It's why, you know, people play sports well after their prime, you know, it's because hmm. And we all know those athletes or the older people who would just get angry on the court. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's like they have all this anger bottled up, but through play, they can actually release it. Yeah. Which is not ideal, but it's better than not doing that. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's beginning that dialogue. And I think that playful perspective can help that journey be more engaging mm. and, and, and interesting and ultimately productive. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that you've brought up a lot to me is like, no, expressing joy in play is actually the, one of the most productive ways to improve performance. And um, when you talk about moving the body, to me, that's, that's what my anxiety is telling me. Hey, dude, yeah. move your body, get into your body. Life is not meant to be always lived in your head. And to me, that's like, okay, I just need to box for 10 minutes a day. I just need, it doesn't need to be some crazy David Goggins workout. It could be just breathing into your body, really getting into your body, light yoga, light mm -hmm. Qigong, something that just gets you out of your head and experiencing those emotions like you started out with. Okay, how am I feeling it in my body? Um, I don't know which question I want to ask first, so I'll throw both out there. You can take it. Um, the first one is, why do you think we lose this? trust of our inner knowing of like the questions and then the second would be the performance why is play so good for for performance and you can pick one and then i'll ask the other later cool so uh, it's the history of play is really interesting i think it connects to uh to that first question of losing our inner knowing um i mean play all mammals play Mm -hmm. It's the way in which we learn how to socialize. We learn the skills necessary for survival. And it's the way we learn to relate to one another in, 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 in society and culture, whatever that may look like, depending on the species. And in our system as human beings, we have a play has become increasingly confined over the past hundred years hmm. back in the 50s the school day was six hours and there was of that day 
you know, one to, it was like two hours were playtime. Where it was almost like two hours of recess and there was much less homework. So then you'd go home and you'd play. Yeah. And, um, and so I think play is really undervalued and earlier and earlier, I think sports is a great example for this where um, activities that are traditionally conducive to play become more serious and more professionalized at younger and younger ages. And I think there's this overtone of seriousness um, that's that's placed on kids mm. that limits that play. And I think it's through that play that we are communicating with our inner knowing. And I mean, we, you know, play is just a great way to ask yourself, what do you want? You wow. Know? And it's that first line of communication between ourselves. So, um, you know, as you look at play, there's so many different types, right? Uh, and I think in our communication with our inner knowing, it requires imagination, mm. that line of communication with our imagination and that capacity to imagine has to be open as well. So, and, and that's what, you know, play is, it's like, we've all created games, you yeah. know, where you just spontaneously come up with a game and engage your imagination to do so. And so you can, you know, just think with yourself and you activate your imagination, play with that as a way to re-engage that communication and then there's social play obviously where you know you're finding ways to do that with others whether that's through your imagination uh, using your physical body um, and all of this i think there's a lot of there's a lot of research that shows the correlation between play and creativity um, play and overall well-being yeah, I'm looking at a different angle. I want to look at play and and see these ideas of building psychological resources. Mm. So things like hope, like optimism, plays helps improve optimism as well, which is such a valuable perspective to have. Um, and all of those relate to to performance. I think the social piece too. That's to me is really glaring in the way we're broadly interacting as a society is there's this absence of play yeah um and i think if we would play more with each other we'd find that we have much more in common than we previously thought yeah uh, i know you playing basketball right we've played with people from all different backgrounds and um, once you're on the court none of that matters when you're playing you know it doesn't matter if you know, you're playing on a college team with guys from all over the country, or you're walking into a random 24 hour fitness where there's ages 18 to 45. There's, there's that you can relate through play. Mm. Um, and it provides this incredible common ground for um, communication, for finding ways to interact that are, we're all speaking a similar language. So, and all of that directly really, you know, if you're feeling good, if you're optimistic, if you're feeling creative, you're likely going to perform better. Yeah. You know? And I think a lot of the great innovators, I mean, there's a, you know, uh, Einstein said, for example, play is the highest form of research. Wow. Which is, it's the way that innovation really occurs through play. Um, and you know, if that's something you're interested in, if you want to innovate, if you want to create, I would think that if you reflect a lot of those moments where you had breakthroughs, whether that be a new idea or you piece things together, you were probably playing, whether that's using your imagination, um, whether that's, you know, doing something that's non-traditional, you know, moving around. A lot of people were going on runs and exercise or they'll take off as a way to process information. So uh, as you could tell, I'm pretty big on play right yeah. now. Uh, no. And I think as a lot of, it, it's been, it's been forgotten in a lot of ways. And yeah. I think there's always ways to revive that because it is this innate, it, it's one of these fundamental human qualities. It never goes away, that desire to play. Yeah. Well, first of all, dude, thanks for sharing all that. I know you've spent so much time getting to that level of knowledge and wisdom into play and, and, enjoy so like thank you for the energy you put in to even be able to express that because that that helped me out a lot and 
as you were talking, bro, the whole time, I just had this like, sm like, I cannot stop like smiling underneath my face. And it's like, one of my favorite mindfulness teachers, like, has you physically smile at the eyes and the mm -hmm. face and like trying to open up those patterns because it, it, it takes you out of fight or flight, it makes you so you're a lot more creative, and there's less urgency in the moment. And one thing that I've noticed is when things when something isn't wrong, when there isn't like some issue to be fixed, the mind is so less activated. And to me, that feels like, okay, what are you going to do in the void of that? Like, oh, it's a lot less work. It's a lot easier. And I think sometimes when I notice or I'm observing our culture now is people want to feel busy. People want to feel like they're productive. And so if they don't have any problems and they're smiling and they're having joy and things are easy, it's like, okay, am I getting better? Is this hard work? You know, am I going to be productive? When to me, I'm starting to realize like that habit that I built really just took me away from performing well. Like the best example I can give is when we were in LA and I probably had the worst experience internal of basketball, probably of my life. Didn't have much joy at all. You sensed it. You're like, bro, come on, man. Like you're, you're kind of just dumping on yourself. You're dumping on the experience. And we came up with a game, a beautiful game for it. But that's a, a, above all else. Like I was so serious and dialed in and training so hard for it, but I didn't have the joy to allow it to express. Mm. And I also, um, when I got to your house, and we're playing the dingers game that was like 300 times more fun mm -hmm. i had such a blast like i'm like this is play i that's basketball what i just did was not play and i'm playing a game mm -hmm. what i played dingers and i'm jumping in the pool grabbing the tennis ball and like finding new ways to debunt the ball and like that to me brings me back to that kid like wonderment where you guys even said it man this guy's playing a different way mm -hmm. well that only comes from me not me being out of my head and not being so focused on, okay, what's the right way to play? What's the right way to do this? Oh, let me just do whatever comes naturally. And, you know, let's see where it goes. And that to me, like was, it, it maybe started this course of realizing, man, play is beautiful, bro. And when you have it, it's not a bad thing. And I just think in my life being so empathetic for the issues and suffering in the world, I'm realizing that it stunted my ability to express joy. And in that it, it, it suffocated my, myself with anger because I'm like, fuck, I can never be happy. And like, it's all, you know, I always got to help. But the, and so there's this constant cycle of just suppressing emotions and, and not expressing them out. Even if they're the ones that we don't think are good, like anger and all these things. Sometimes it, for me, it's, it's one swear word, boom, I'm out. And like that, that slap of the whip, it's gone, it's out. And now I'm back to just being, in that equanimity and I'm just flowing, I'm just being, but for so long, I just trapped it in there. And even when I felt joy, it was like, I don't know, how do you even express it? Do we even talk about that? It always needs to be this scaling. So, um, I appreciate all that feedback, man. I appreciate all that, that info because it secures that. And the more that I look into it, it's like, if that's the goal, maybe that this is the next segue is, if that's the goal, joy, expressing more joy versus getting rid of problems we don't want to fix, how do you think that changes our growth and evolution process? Hmm. Well, I want to touch on um, like two types of play because you brought up a good point where you could be playing a game but not playing. Mm. And so play is something that you superimpose upon an activity. And what you describe with dinners is something that's, that's spontaneous play. Dangerous, that's something that just occurs right <laughs> yeah. where it's something new it's often in new settings where you're not as familiar with it um, so you have that freedom it there's there's a game there's certain rules but you have freedom within those rules to do whatever you want um, and you know you weren't thinking so you just allowed yourself to explore and to play in that space and then something like basketball that you've been spending your whole life cultivating these skills in um, playing in that way is that's more of a serious play which is still play but it requires more effort to then mm. figure out how you want to create play in that space for yourself. So the, you know, that's something like, all right, let's create a game within a game. You know, mm. let's, let's make, uh, you know, in this game, I want to shoot, I want to work on my step back, plant off right foot leaner. Let's try to shoot three of those. Okay. <laughs> 
So something that's like fun that you get joy out of, like I like this shot, or I'm gonna, yeah, I want to take the title of Captain Floaty. <laughs> so I need to shoot four floaters this game, right? Yeah. So things like that, right? It creates this opportunity to still play, still get better, um, not dismiss the the repercussions of the activity, right? Like you want to win the tournament still, but it's also a way to then adopt a more playful attitude, perhaps. Mm. Um, and so that's something that specifically when you think of like your daily work, you know, what can you do with things you're already doing to engage in them in a more playful way? Yeah. And there's no right answer. It just takes some consideration and allowing your imagination to work like that, to, to work on that and solve that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then to the, you know, to the, the aspect of joy, you know, you look at, um these collective experiences and for example concerts festivals right where uh, you have a large group of people who are all experiencing joy together and how good that feels right mm. it's why people in in same for you know sporting events like a really good dramatic game where your team that you've aligned yourself with wins there's that joy you turn around and you're high-fiving people you don't even know. All of that is, um, it, joy is, the effects of joy are multiplied when experienced in groups. Mm -hmm. And I think it also, uh, for a while, I was really interested in looking at how, I wasn't able to find, come to any conclusions about a hypothesis that when sports teams were successful, joy would increase mm. and then crime level in the cities would decrease because people would be, I couldn't find a correlation there. Oh, there's um, one dude, the crime stopper, whoever that was in high school. Right. That's a great Something. example. Yeah. 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 Um, in Baltimore. Um, and so that's, and that's, you know, it's hard to pin that on joy per se, mm. but it is, I think this collective emotion that's being experienced. So as far as like, I'd say like how joy could, you know, benefit is by, is by normalizing the expression of it. Wow. Um, and to, you know, as, as we are, I think normalizing the expression of all emotions, you see a lot of increase in emotional literacy coming up in different fields. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also this pushback on, um, you know, some of this, these new age spiritual philosophies like law of attraction or, you know, just manifest everything forget like you know everything's good everything's love there's a there's a pushback now because like wait no it's not i feel like shit mm. you know i feel like shit right now and and that's okay yeah and and just like there is in, in, in the negative emotions the normalization of that also normalizing i think the expression of of joy as well i think we've all been in a situation where we're feeling really good but perhaps the room around us yeah isn't yep so we're like okay well I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> mess yeah. up the bot, mess, yeah. mess up the messed up vibe, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think that's some, that's a step that, that could really alleviate and, and offer the pathway to experiencing joy, which again is, it's that moment to bring yourself out of your normal experience to gain new perspective, to connect at a deeper level. And, you know, the ramifications of that, even just a moment shared, it is, it could be profound. Yeah. I mean, what you're saying there too, is like suffering is a great teacher. Like, I think we need challenges and pain and all these things are not bad. Like truly happy people have anger and pain, but it's not the barometer. Like joy is our birthright as well we can express joy too. And to me, what I've seen is like, if that's the highest state of consciousness and I can protect that and express it for a room that might be in some lower tiers or struggling every single time I've been in that state, I look at life so differently. I look at people so differently. I look, I look at them. I'm like, I cannot possibly conceive them to be sad around me. It's like this weird feeling of like, I know I can help them like uplift them if I stay here. And it's the most beautiful feeling. It's not like I'm controlling them, which is where I wanted to go to is like with my fifth grade team. 
I'm making up these chants and we're having fun. And we're just like, you know, there was a dead bird outside and they're all freaking out. I'm like, Oh, well, you know, I call our team the ghost buckets because they were missing so many layups. I'm like, there must be a ghost up there. <laughs> and I was like, maybe that's our ghost guys. You know, let's yeah. like, and they're just laughing. They're dying. And like, I was kind of resonating to their level of play. Like if I just coach them, you need to run this play and this, and this, this, like they're going to be stubborn. Um, and that's what courts told me is like, if you, if you get too serious too early, it creates that stubbornness and you're not, you're not capable of evolving or changing or moving. And so when we have fun with the difficult things, we're more capable of taking them on. And those kids have taught me that so much is like, I just have to let go of control sometime um, of like, okay, they are kids, let their mind go crazy. Let them just like express themselves. And like, and when I watch them really, like really watch them, I'm like, they're having such a blast because it's like a real life video game to them. They've never, they don't even know what they're doing with their body mm -hmm. half the time. The, the way they're guarding their guy, they have no clue where this guy's going to go. Whereas I, I could bring my mind into it. Like, you know, he's going to go, right? No, yeah. this kid's like, Oh, what's going to happen. <laughs> and to me, that's like, ah, oh, man, I just start smiling. I'm just like, that's fucking play. Yeah. that's play that's why we live it's not to be like oh my god we have to win the game and but i remember telling you about some of these things and you brought up a great point of if i let the reins off too much and they just start kicking balls off the wall there's less capacity for play so play does need a little bit of structure where sometimes i, I go hey guys i need 10 minutes lock in and then we're gonna have fun because they need to have that to play up to their capability to express more joy and have more fun. And when they win those games, shoot, I'll, I'll link it. I'll put a clip of when we won some games and they're freaking out, they're screaming like Jordan. I, I tell you there, there was a game where we played a kid who was like probably six feet tall in fifth right. grade. And he was, they just stuck him in the middle of the paint. We couldn't score on him. And when we fouled him out, I've never seen a group of kids so excited to foul a guy out. <laughs> they were freaking out the rest were like what is going on the kids are screaming and i'm like they just like they're having so much joy in this yeah. challenge and like the whole expression that I, I it just it just makes me smile thinking about it like it taught me so much more about basketball than i probably ever taught them so mm. in another roundabout way how does structure come into play so that it's not just chaos um and how does that improve play yeah an example of this is, I'm going to ask you a question here. So do something. Do something. <laughs> so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You, I'd say you're, you're adept at playing, right? <laughs> that's, that's an example of play with no boundaries, right? Mm. You tell someone to do something, most of the time they do something. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, if I say do something with your hands, you know, then you might go like this or like talk to it or, you know, examine it. Who knows? Like mm -hmm. do this, make, make puppets, whatever. Right. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> um, so that's an example of like, you know, play in, in games. There's, there's a couple components. There are rules. There's an objective. There's feedback. And, um, there's one more component, but even with those three and some sort of structure, but even with those three, um, you know, you give, you give opportunity for feedback, you give it an objective and you've set some rules in place. Now you can play. Mm. Uh, it's why sports people play because they all have those components. So when you're thinking about integrating play, it's like, okay, what are some, what are some boundaries? What are some rules? Am I getting feedback? Are there ways I can get feedback? The more continuous or constant, the better. Um, and then and what's the objective? Like that story you told, right? They had all that. Okay, our objective to foul this guy out. <laughs> yeah. We got to get him out of here. He's okay. too big. So that was like a game within the game, right? Yeah, yeah. And and there was feedback. Okay, did did he draw the foul or not? All right, well, he blocked, he tossed our stuff which, again. Yeah, which we needed the refs to adhere to the rules or else the kid doesn't foul out. Yep. Yep. So I had all those components, which then allowed play to occur, this mini game, and then ultimately that joy to be expressed. Mm. 
yeah um after as that objective and and it kind of built as i'm sure as he got closer to fouling out um so you know thinking of those components and um and and trying to build those in it also and i think to your experience like kids are incredible teachers yeah because they are they are intuitive they have that line of communication with themselves and it's really easy for them to tap into it if you if you just give them a little so nudge beautiful bro you know like watching kids at uh, like a wedding i think of a wedding i went to and there was you know like probably eight kids or so between the ages of like three to eight and you know within five minutes they'd gone together and like created some game i don't know what it was it was like tag um they were like teams but who knows and they were just running <laughs> around lost in it for like two hours i'm like wow and all these um, adults are you know like yeah sipping their drinks yeah. cheers being really formal and um and it's just like wow i learned a lot from that and so i think when in terms of play a great way to get inspiration is to to, to just observe observe kids and see what they do and, and see how they are inquisitive, how they are embodying play, pursuing play. And that can really help you reintegrate that and re-engage in playing. Holy shit, man. I love that. That yeah. inspires me so much because it is like, you know, my uh, forms of connection here on the island thus far have been kids or adults. There's nobody my age here. Not that I've met. So I get the wisdom of the adults and I get the, the, the deeper conversations with some of them. But then I could just get this like fun 101 from these kids and just seeing the way that their mind works and how they don't, they don't judge it. They let their mind run and say funny things and express their bodies in weird ways. And like, to me, that's been so inspiring to where I, and the parents will they'll say, man, you're just like another one of the kids. They resonate to you. It's because a lot of times I think I go back down to that level with them and I, and mm -hmm. I learn from them. They feel that they feel that I'm not forcing them to be any way, but I am also still respected because I am their coach and I want them to play well. And I want them to improve. And so it's that constant balance. And sometimes that is expressing anger. Th mm -hmm. That's one of my most proudest moments this year when I expressed anger and I felt like it was needed. And typically in the past, I would have, I would have uh, stuck it down because I thought anger was bad. And like, that's not a good thing to do to kids. It's like, no, he needed me to get angry. And things have changed ever since because it was, it was needed in that moment to wake him up out of some type of habit mm -hmm. that he was in. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, man, I appreciate those insights. And I'm curious, I know I want to be cognizant of, of your time and stuff. Is there anything else coming to your mind about play that you want to share or, or joy in general? Yeah. Um, I think something you said is important too, which is that ability to travel along that spectrum mm. of let's, let's call it, you know, play and, and work or playfulness and, and seriousness. There are times where, you know, you have to be really direct and, you know, whether you have to get something done or it is, a more serious matter that requires a different embodiment, a different energy, different composure of yourself. And to begin to develop that awareness and that ability to travel along that spectrum, I think creates so much flexibility in, your, in the possibilities you're able to embody, impart, and share with others. Um, yeah. You're, you're, the, possibilities of human experience just increases tenfold when you open yourself up to especially play i think a lot of us are are, are have gotten familiarized with that that serious component but it just allows so much more movement mm. and i think that's a lot of what we're seeking is to unlock our human potential right so yeah. um to be able to understand where you're at on that line and what's needed in the moment that to me is a, a huge part of the process of, of self-mastery. Wow. And the same could be said about emotions too. Yeah. You know, that to me is, uh, th that's mastery to be able to articulate, to express your emotions when they're coming up. That's, that's it. You do that. Wow. Man. I mean, that's, 
that's that's where I feel like I'm headed because it's once once the judgment subsides, I think, uh, or at least for myself, once I stop judging every part of the spectrum, I would, I would judge it if I was feeling joy. Well, what about people suffering? I was judging if I was having anxiety. Well, why am I feeling this? Once it's just pure expression from high to low, it's it's like that's when we're at our best. Our body, we can trust it. We can know about it. So thanks again for all your your knowledge and wisdom. And I'm curious, do you want to plug any of your um, either consulting or your play stuff? Because I know I'm a part of your email list. Do you, is there anything that you, you know, people want to connect more with you? Is there anything you want to say about that? Yeah, I'll be launching a, uh, a program on play um, on February 21st. Um, so I'm putting that together now. And really what it's going to consist on is talking a little bit about play as our natural state. And then also some ways in which we wow. can integrate play into our daily lives and some strategies to do that. And, and there'll be, you know, some group calls we can brainstorm and it's, you know, it's really, it's really for everyone, whether you're an athlete or an entrepreneur, or, you know, you're working a job and you're looking to experience some more joy and enthusiasm, engagement in that, whatever it is you're doing, uh, I, this program might be useful for that. And how can they connect with you? To, you can to connect with that. me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Jordan Hamilton Zero. I'll have a link up there. Um, I have a website as well, jordanhamiltonconsulting.com. And, uh, and yeah, I, you know, I'm really passionate about play. It'll be awesome. first time, I'm, you know, these years of, of playing with this idea to get it into <laughs> the light. So I'm really excited to do so. Yeah, man. And I, I want to express deep gratitude and I'll, I'll link all those things and I'll try to get it out before February or February 21st. Um, but just like you following this passion, at first I was kind of like, again, confused by it. It was so far gone from my experience that I'm like, what does he mean? Like he's studying play, like he's studying play. How do I, like, how does that fit into my life right now? Oh, I don't know. I feel like I'm an adult now. I'm not sure, but dude, having some more research self-reflection this is like so huge what you're doing um i'm so excited to see see it drop and i guess the last thing is how are you going to express joy today uh today i'm going to express joy by rolling rolling i'm gonna do some rolls on the floor salts yeah some floor work and just move around love that and then just let my body do what it wants to do probably hoot and holler while i'm doing it oh yes 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 <laughs> do you know the answer jordan yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's wow. that's it right there man oh, i appreciate dude. you brother uh all you do and uh you know the, the the work with the kids challenge you know taking on being innovative in this space and applying all the knowledge you've gained in your own journey all the work you put in the introspection and giving that gift to others is is really inspiring well if you made it to the end thank you so much for tuning in as always you can connect with me for one-on-one coaching or support at willwellnesscoaching.com and stay tuned for the next episode keep flowing